Hey everyone, MTash here with his ugly Titan. I have put in some crazy hours trying to get my power level up so I could do all the different activities and play this season uh, to give a bit of a review. I know there's a lot of people in my comment section and on Twitch that are saying, hey, should I, should I buy this? How, how's this season? Should I be playing? Should I come back to Destiny? And I, I wanted to give an answer to that because... Um, there is a lot that goes into that question, right? It depends what kind of player you are. So I want to touch on a few things. I want to talk about gear and future gear. I want to talk about story and lore. And I want to talk about enjoyment of the game. Now, the quick and dirty is if you are bored or were bored of Destiny, it's a lot of the same, okay? I have grinded up my power levels here. And um, it was the same as the last season and the season before and the season before. We've essentially had eight seasons or DLC of the same power grind. You go and do some Crucible games and you get a powerful drop. You do some Gambit, you get a powerful drop. You do some Vanguard stuff, you go to the moon, there's different things. Oh, what's this? The Tangled Shore has a Flashpoint. Flashpoint? Oh my god, that's exciting! Listen... The gear grind has been pretty much the same for two years. I'm sick of it. I'm bored of it. I'm doing it because I want to, you know, check out the new content and make sure I cover it. But I would not say that it is very fun. And so if you felt bored playing the game and getting your power levels up and it felt kind of meaningless, well, unfortunately, it is still meaningless. But I wanted to talk about getting your power up because there's one thing I do recommend and you're going to have to put in a little bit of time to play. And that is the new dungeon, okay? I think that the dungeons are master content. I think this is some of the best content that Bungie puts out and this Prophecy Dungeon is awesome. It is a great experience, visually beautiful. The rewards from it, maybe not the best. But if you like Destiny, and you like fighting stuff, and you like, you know, the experiences, I highly recommend putting in a little bit of time to end up playing this. Even at 1040, it's definitely doable if you've got some good gear. We did it at 1030. Um, it gets much harder as you go. If you waited till, you know, later on in the season to do it, that's fine too. Maybe you want to come at this at 1040, 1050, 1060. I don't care what you do, but I think that everyone should play this dungeon. But here's the thing, it's free. You don't actually need the season pass to play this, from what I've heard, and that means you could just jump on, do some power grind, do some, you know, stuff, and then you could jump into this whenever you're available and you have the power level for it. Um, unfortunately, this is going away after this season. It's gonna come back, but apparently there's like a technical issue and going forward, they have to remove this, so you essentially have this season to play it. I know, fear of missing out, that sucks, but at the same time, I do think it's a good piece of content. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's say you're bored of Destiny. You don't really want to play. Even the thought of that is like, eh, I don't want to grind. Here is my concession to that, or here is my argument. Near the end of the, the season, in July, there's going to be the moments of triumph coming out. And I know a lot of people like doing the moments of triumph. And then there's the solstice of heroes coming out, kind of July, August time, right? Every year they do that. They do moments of triumph for the year, and they do the solstice of heroes. By then, there's also going to be some exotic quests that have come out, you know, with the season pass. There's going to be some story missions, right? I think that later in the summer would be the optimal time if you want to take a bit of a break now and then jump in and start playing. And I'm going to recommend that for a couple things, especially if you do see yourself playing the DLC, uh, right? There's new subclasses coming. I, I think it's a pretty appealing DLC in September, so you might want to put in the time to play. I'll explain that in a minute, but that would probably be optimal. If you're on the fence and you're like, hey, should I get this season? Should I play? I would say that later on, once you've seen everything available, that would be a good time. I think that most people that, you know, play this quite a bit, you'll be able to complete most of that content in a month or two, right? I don't know if you need 100 days. I think the season's like 100 days and a bit um, from now until September. And I think you're going to be bored. I think you're going to be bored. It's a lot of the same stuff until there's new activities and new things. It's just going to feel like last season and the season before. So don't burn out. 
okay? Don't burn out before the new DLC drops and hate on Destiny uh, before it gets fun. That's, that's my thoughts. So here's another thing. If you do see yourself playing in the future, um, everyone's gear is going to be decommissioned, essentially, right? You know that? The power level? This thing only goes to 1060. And so, going into the new DLC, this weapon is going to be obsolete very quickly. It's not going to be able to be used in Nightfalls. It's not going to be able to use in Raid. It's just going to be too low power, and it's going to have to get replaced. Even with a blue. A blue will be better than this. A blue will be better than my Recluse. And even much of my armor. You might have some awesome stat rolls, but... If it's the older gear, it is getting decommissioned as well. Now, the reason partially that they're doing this, I, I'm pretty sure, is because there's mods like the, the Taken uh, Armaments and Hive Armaments and Hive Barrier and Taken uh, Repurposing. These are really good mods. These are extremely powerful mods, and I think they don't want them in the game, if I'm being honest with you. I think they are so strong that they don't want them available in-game. And, um, you know, that's, that's a change that that I know a lot of people don't like, but you have to remember that this gear, even though you loved it, even though it's good stat rolls, is gonna be gone. But new gear, it won't. If you look at this chest piece, this is a new piece of gear. This is 1,360, so 300 power levels higher, or potentially higher if you infuse. So, if you want to go into the new DLC in September with some gear, you might want to consider playing. One way to do that easily, or relatively easily, would be do a bunch of bounties and play, you know, a little bit here and there and try to get some of these items out of the season pass. So you can see this boot here is a 66 roll. The Warlock, the Hunter, they're going to have a different stat distribution. But the thing is, is if you level up the season pass, all three of your characters would have access to this. Your Titan would have boots, your Warlock would have boots, your Hunter would have boots. And so if you put some time in, and get into these levels. What, I think it ends up here. Oh no, it ends all the way back here. Is that it? Oh, the helmet is the last one. So level 57. Essentially get to level 57, and you would have an armor set that would be kick butt going into the new DLC. You wouldn't have to grind everything. You'd already have some high stat rolls. That's something that I would recommend doing over the course of the season. Just play bit by bit, do some easy bounties, get some experience, put some time in, and um, you're going to be set for next season. On top of that, if you do that, you're going to get a couple other things. If you're doing the season pass stuff. You can get the Wither Horde. Now, Wither Horde Exotic is very solid. And with the Catalyst, it is going to be one of the best DPS weapons in the game. It's similar to the Anarchy because it does damage over time. So you can hit a target with this and then dive in with a sword or dive in with another weapon. And Wither Horde, I think, is going to be pretty meta in a lot of activities. It also, when you kill an enemy, it spreads. So this thing is great. I'm going to do a review later on. But on top of that, <clears throat> Fallen Guillotine. This sword is probably going to be meta for DPS. This thing is very, very good. So you might want to consider playing some of the activities to get this. Will there be an alternative next season? Maybe. But I don't know. And if you really care about Destiny, you might not want to risk it. So there's some things here where it's a little bit of FOMO, fear missing out. Um, I, I don't have the answer for that. I don't know if there will be a replacement, but something like this, it's a very strong weapon. It's very fun to use. Um, so that's something to consider is just the gear aspect of things and, and how much you care about next season. You can jump into the DLC with and, and completely replace all your gear. That's fine. But if you, if you are one of those players that wants to really be prepped and have like a loadout ready to go, then that's something you need to think about. Trials. Okay, if you haven't been playing Trials of Osiris, uh, it's going to be launching today. There's a new, uh, like, bounty, or not bounty, yeah, I guess a bounty, a bounty engram, um, that you can start farming some of the Trials loot. Again, they're going to start adding, like, adept weapons down the road and different weapons, and so are you really missing out? Probably not. Most of the weapons aren't that amazing, um, but if you really cared about Trials loot, you could get that now with the Engram without even having to win. You just have to play Trials a bit and you earn the reward. So that's interesting, but I don't know if I care about that. But I guess the one other thing I would say is story. 
So apparently there's going to be multiple story missions that are releasing over the coming weeks. But honestly, there's only two right now. There's two right now. Apparently there's another next week. Apparently there's one kind of every other Tuesday or every Tuesday. And if there is, that's cool. I want to know about the pyramid ships. I care about the story. Not much, but I care about the story. And maybe you care about the story. But you could also just wait until the end of summer to jump in and do all the story missions when they're already all in the game. Right? So I think that the main the, the main takeaway is there is some stuff that you might want here. I think the dungeon is definitely worth a playthrough, especially if it goes away. I, I, I really recommend trying this dungeon out. There are some good pieces of gear, and maybe they surprise us. Maybe they surprise us with a new exotic. Maybe there's a cool new quest. I don't know. I don't know what they have up their sleeves, okay? But I also think that a lot of it can wait. I think a lot of it can wait until July, August, when there's Moments of Triumph, Sources of Heroes, there's a bunch of stuff going on, and you can take a bit of a break. You can come back fresh, you can get some power, you can get some items, you can get some stuff ready for the DLC, but I think the DLC is where things are going to really change, and that's what I'm hoping for. This same power level loot treadmill is getting really old. I'm getting really bored of it, okay? And it's hard for me to recommend doing it, because I'm not having fun doing it. Okay, and if I'm not having fun doing it, you probably aren't having fun doing it if you already quit the game. Right? Um, so th those are my thoughts. Do you come back? Maybe, but maybe in a bit. Maybe you wait till later in the summer. The big thing, though, is I think that September uh, has a lot of potential. And I know a lot of people want to jump back into the game now because they saw the reveal. They want, they want to jump back in now because they're like, oh, well, I want to get ready for September. If you're one of those players that has quit for a while and you're one of those players that, that is, is hoping for new content, even if you are jumping in fresh in September and your power levels are far, far below, you're going to catch up very quickly. Typically when there's a new DLC, um, you know, your gear starts dropping at such high power levels that even if you're like 960 right now or, or like 850, the base gear, the blue gear that you're getting from every match, it's going to skyrocket you up so fast that you really won't be that far behind. Will you be the highest power level in the game uh, three days in? No, you're not. You're going to be a little bit behind. But the catch-up mechanics are there, I think. And so if you really want to jump in fresh and you want to just take a break from Destiny, unless they really surprise us this season, it's going to be kind of like last season. It doesn't seem that there's enough to keep us hyper engaged for 100 days. Maybe check in on Tuesdays. Do the Tuesday resets. That would probably be a good alternative, right? Just do Tuesday, see what's new, do some bounties, do some level ups, make some progress, and then go do some other stuff. Enjoy your summer. That's what I'm planning on doing a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's my job to make content, but I, I, I'm going to play some PvP, but I'm going to play some Path of Exile. I'm going to play some games that I enjoy. And then we go hard in September <laughs> because I know I'll be hard. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate this video. Um, that's it. See you later. Bye-bye.